Kings Mill, one of the, uh, well, Kings Mill, the electrification of economies, a uh, lot of attention spent on the supply side, the wind and the solar and the, and the batteries. Not as much attention paid to the demand side, but that is really where the, the revolution is happening, isn't it? Well, it's happening on both, both sides of the spectrum. And I, I have to say, I, I've been guilty of this. When I first started looking at this um, uh, 10 or 15 years ago, I too focused on the supply side. Um, and, and you know, you, there's an incredible story going on there. But it, it, it's, it's, uh, it, there's an equally powerful story going on on the supply side. And if, if you can re reduce your, um, uh, uh, your supply by two or threefold by putting in solar and wind instead of... Um, coal or gas you can also reduce your uh your end demand by using electricity rather than using fossil fuels so you're actually reducing the the pile of energy that you require from from both ends of the spectrum so anyway the demand side story is incredibly powerful and i think what has, what people have come to realize over the last three or four years is that the demand side story is 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 only about or almost exclusively about electrification the electrification of end uses and so what, what people forget about electrification is that it, it has an extremely long history obviously you know after edison in the 1880s um electrification has basically taken over one sector after the next very powerfully and inexorably it's been the only source of growth of uh, uh energy on a per capita basis uh uh, fun fact since since 90 since the 1970s um so we we're, we're now in a position where electricity is is providing around 22% of final energy demand about 35% of useful energy because basically flicking on the light switch is much more valuable than um pouring um pouring um, some some kerosene into a tank um in order to 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 turn it into motion but the, the the point to me is that um electricity is the largest piece of the puzzle today but it has been very it's been unable to penetrate the third piece of the energy system which is transport so it's 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 dominant in buildings it's dominant in dominant in, in industry not widely appreciated but it is a large piece of, of, of useful supply in, in industry as well um but it hasn't been in the transport sector and now of course is coming to the transport sector and it's coming in at speed so the electrification of transport is therefore going to speed up dramatically the uh electrification of our economies let's talk about that a little bit because um when we think here in the west when we think of electric electrification of transport we think of cars maybe to a less, much lesser extent, trucks. But that's only part of the story. There's two and three wheelers, there's uh, school buses, transit buses, uh, construction vehicles, and China is really leading in that uh, de department, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, so so to, to give you the numbers, it's actually moderately interesting. Of the 300 exajoules of fossil fuels which ends up in final demand about um 120 is is going into transport and 90 is going into road transport so you can immediately see this is a very very material piece of the um fossil fuel system so so when these t technologies are coming in they're three or four times more efficient you know we, we hadn't cracked batteries now we have cracked batteries um so yeah, so so China's been leading, as you say, in two wheelers. Is basically all of the two wheeler market in China has been electrified, um, and and then the bus market, and then cars, uh, and and now cars. Sixty percent of cars in August, for example, in China, um, are uh, car sales are electric. And now, of course, you're seeing this incredible story taking place in the trucking sector, where you basically had a doubling in uh, in penetration in the last twelve months. So it's the great story of electrification. It, it 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 gets it worms its way into new sectors. Incumbents are always extremely skeptical um, that it can succeed, and then it gets cost down. It increases density, and then it just takes over. So if you look at what happened, for example, to appliances of between nineteen hundred and nineteen twenty, when when electricity took over from steam, 
it, it, it takes 20 years and then, you know, nobody is using these old steam-based systems. We're going to look back in 20 years' time at people um, driving diesel cars as kind of archaic um, uh, technology. Let's talk about uh, buildings and industry using heat pumps. This is a, a fascinating story uh, because it's catching on uh, fairly rapidly, and yet we don't talk about it very much. Well, the, the first thing, the first point to be made about buildings is don't forget that um, electricity is already about 40% of final energy demand in buildings. So it's the by far the biggest part of um, final energy demand today in the building sector. I mean, take, you know, this this call is being used, is being had using electricity, the lights are electricity, you know, every, everything which is what they call work-based um, energy is already electrified. Um, and, and the only part, or not, uh, almost the only part of home-based uh, demand, well, the two big parts, actually, w w one is um, the replacement of uh, wood in uh, the emerging markets, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, which is a very specific problem where, again, electricity can dramatically help because wood for um, cooking, for example, incredibly inefficient. Um, but then the other one is, uh, is 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 basically gas for heating. And it's in the gas for heating market where you're now seeing um, uh, heat pumps uh, c coming in. So in the US, for example, uh, heat pumps already outselling um, uh, furnaces, I think they call them. Um, a new word we don't often use in England. But anyway, they're already outselling furnaces, and um, you know, regardless of, of the um, administration that's in charge, already happening in China at speed. The government is is now wanting to push out coal for for reasons of pollution, um, and therefore is actually pushing heat pumps into the cities in Europe. We had this incredible blip after Putin's illegal invasion of Ukraine, and then it fell back a bit. But you know, also in Europe, there's there's a categorical imperative to reduce our um, uh, gas imports. So, yeah, the, the heat pump story, the only problem with the heat pump story is that we don't have great data on it. It's not as amazing as the solar, as the EV um, story. And and we, I, I, we, we still haven't totally um, uh, got, got it on the same exponential growth curves, but it is undoubtedly uh, starting to win the battle. Well, heat pumps, that's a good segue into industry. And we generally think of of, of energy in, in four areas, uh, the power sector, transportation, buildings, and industry. Yeah. And, and industry was always considered the hardest to abate, the hardest to electrify. We were yeah. going to have to use a lot of hydrogen. And yeah. one of the amazing stories in the last three years is how much of industry we can now electrify. Exactly. I mean, this, in fairness, always was an absolutely fake debate. So to be clear, electricity is 35% of final energy demand in the industrial sector 35 percent and um it it is obviously all work-based energy is already electricity you know same as in your home um and then of course you can also electrify low temperature heat and and so we did this very interesting calculation at ember where we uh analyzed each of the different 12 or 15 subsectors inside electricity and sorry inside industry and we found that in, in in every single one apart from two um electricity has already driven either decline or a plateau in fossil fuel demand and that in so so all across light industry fossil fuel demand has actually have been falling for about 10 years uh, uh because the chinese have been electrifying their their light industrial uh demand so that means textiles it means food it means beverages um right across the the um right across the park um in heavy industry, even, even in chemicals and the iron and steel sector, there's no growth left, folks, um, for the fossil fuel demand because electricity is just chipping away at demand. And there's like there's there's these couple of sectors, I think construction is one of them, um, where there's a little bit of, 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 of structural growth still coming through, but that's only 6% of all fossil fuel demand. So this narrative that fossil fuels, um, you, you cannot electrify them is, is, is simply incorrect. What is correct is that fossil fuels does have some hard to solve parts. Um, you know, the last 30 percent, the you know, the the petrochemical industry or parts of the petrochemical industry, you know, parts of the iron and steel industry. It, but that, that what we what we shouldn't forget is that that's just the last piece. And as we have seen consistently through the energy transition, the last piece is no impediment to growth of the of, of, of the story.